What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in for another week of the Average Joe Lawn Care Show. Uh, it's an it's an honor and privilege to have all of you in my audience tuning in tonight to watch, and it's also just an honor and pl- privilege to have George from Princess Cut Lawn Care on the show tonight. Um, I, I really sincerely appreciate everybody coming on board tonight and watching and, and joining in, and it's it's a good. Uh, 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 George is a, uh, he's a, he's a new YouTuber this year, but he, his channel has done extremely well and gone from, you know, it's just, it's gotten very big in a short, short amount of time, all things considered. So I'm very lucky and fortunate to have him on and, uh, George, how you doing, bud? Dude, Ben, I'm doing awesome. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, are you warming up, up in the Chicagoland area? Yeah, actually, it's funny you mentioned that because today alone it was like 60 degrees, man. All the snow's melted, birds are chirping. I'm starting to hear I'm, hear the signs of spring, man. Spring is in the air here in Chicago, and I cannot wait. So, uh, has the snow been gone for a while for you, or when was, when did it like finish melting? Uh, I guess it just started uh, melting. Uh, I'd say like today was like the first official day that there was no snow left. Okay, dude, I. I got to admit, Ben, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me on the show, bud. I really appreciate that. And uh, I'm a little nervous. Is that weird? <laughs> yeah. So, guys, uh, George, George has his own show on his uh, his channel. He did uh, America's Top Lawns. Is that correct? Is that the right name? And then he did uh, Freshman Class, uh, where he brought in a lot of the newer YouTubers that came up over this last year. So he did. He did a, a podcast similar to mine over this whole winter, and before the show, he's telling me he's like, "I feel nervous for some reason," and I'm like, "Dude, you've been doing this. It's like, it's all right. Just have fun, relax." And I hope everybody <laughs> in the chats having fun and just enjoying the community tonight as well. Yeah, I think it's like uh, it's like a it's weird being on the other side of things, man. You know, usually I'm sitting like in like the cockpit, you know, controlling everything, and now. You know, it just feels weird to be able to relax, man. It's kind of nice, dude. I could get yeah, used to this. Yeah, that's what I felt like when you had me on my show. I was like, I kind of like being on this end of it. I didn't feel nervous. I was like, I don't have to worry about things, making sure they're streaming well and, and focusing on the chat and all those kind of things. It was just, you know, it's uh, it's enjoy the time on your end because it's not like that all the time. <laughs> dude, I totally agree, man. But enough about me, man. I'm sure you guys have been hearing me blabber all winter season, dude. Let's see what's up with the people in the chat, dude. Yeah, so it looks like we got uh, Connor. Thank you for coming on. We got Nathan from uh, Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Thank you. Play those all night. I don't have a soundboard like uh, like George <laughs> over here. He's way more tech tech savvy than I am. Super TA, thanks for what's going on. Uh, Meister of my lawn. We got Brandon Hyden, Grace Ortiz. What's up, Grace? Uh, the Lawn Analyst, Lazy Lawns. Hey, how you doing, Derek? Papa Mo's Low, Andy's Lawn Care and Outdoor Adventures. I hope, I hope you. What's keep, up, Andy? I hope you keep those videos coming, Andy. I love seeing young young kids like you making content. That's awesome. Uh, Jason, what's going on? El- Cam from Elevated Lawns. Alan, Kyle from Lake House Lawn Care. We got Ned G. Left tool in the house. Uh, the I already got the lawn analyst Brian from Bermuda. Brian, oh snap! Look who we got up in here. Shortcut lawn. What's up, Albert? What's going on? I think I don't know if I've seen Albert in the chat uh, on on my show. So I I appreciate you coming on board tonight, uh, Mister. This is a surreal. Two, two of my fa- some of my favorite lawn YouTubers in the building right now, <clears> man. <throat> So who Connor Ward, man, you know, I got to say he was a big inspiration on me and, you know, Mo and Low. And then we got Shortcut Lawn, who, <laughs> I mean, let's just say his lawn speaks for itself, man. Sure. So uh, thank you guys so much for coming in. Scott O'Hare is in the building. What's up, Scotty? Scott, Jamie, uh, LG, uh, Around the House with Pat. I don't, I have not seen that name in the chat. So thank you so much for coming on board tonight. If you're, if you're new to the chat, if you or if you're new to the show and you haven't been on the show uh, and you're from George's channel, uh, I, I appreciate you guys coming on board. I, I keep the show pretty light. It's really just about having fun. We all hang out. 
you guys talk in the chat. We we want to try to incorporate all, everybody in the chat as much as you can through a chat. Um, but it's it's kind of just like me and George hanging out, and we're all hanging out talking about lawn care stuff. And it doesn't necessarily have to be lawn care. We might dive into topics that are in, somewhat uh, unrelated or indirectly related to lawn care. So it's just going to be a fun night. We try to just have uh, have some stories, laughs, and those types of things. And just I kind of envision it as a late night lawn care show where it's just a good time for us to unwind from a good work week and uh, get ready for a relaxing weekend. So, uh, Mark from Lawn Creeps Limited in the house. I don't. Did you see his video recently uh, that actually just dropped tonight with uh, John Perry, George? Uh, no, I didn't see the one with the John Perry, but I did see the one with the lawn tools. And I got to say that video brought back so many memories because I used to live in the city right next to Mark called Elmhurst. And I love that area over there, like the central area mm -hmm. and, you know, seeing the prairie path behind his house and seeing the Ovaltine factory. I mean, you know, I grew up right over there, Mark, you know, right. I used to live right behind the coals on 83 in St. Charles, man. And, you know, it, it was just, it brought back such good memories. So are you, are you always, are you like born and raised in Chicago? Yeah. Yeah. I was born and raised in the city of Chicago in the near West side. And then, uh, towards, uh, like uh, grade school time, I moved to Elmhurst, uh, which is a suburb of Chicago. And then like every five to 10 years, I just kept moving more West, more West, more West. Now I'm in the Naperville area. So, uh, who knows, man, I might end up in St. Louis one day, dude. <laughs> well, that'd be, that'd be okay with all of us. Uh, you can just keep that cub stuff up in Chicago though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and man, I know you and you St. Louis guys, man, you guys are hardcore, man, about the Cardinals, dude. I don't blame you, dude. I mean, they got a yep, good team, it's, dude. It's uh, the Cardinals and the Blues, and I know it's the big thing with the Chicago Chicago Cubs and the Blackhawks, but I I kind of see the Blackhawks are, you know, they're kind of, they're as successful if uh, as like the Cardinals are to the Cubs, you know, as the Blues, as the Blackhawks are to the Blues, so um but yeah, it is it's a fun rivalry for sure. Yeah, hey, we got Shortcut Lawn over here said Schomburg, Illinois represent. Hey, Shortcut Lawn, I don't know, you probably uh you're pretty close to uh Kyle over there. Well, I know you don't live in Illinois anymore. You're in leave. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's but, true. Uh, but yeah, he said Schomburg represent. I know he used to live in the Chicago land area and Schomburg is right next to Kyle from Lake House Lawn Care, so you, you guys would have been neighbors if you were still here. So I kind of I think that's really cool that you you know a lot of these guys' names and I know a number of people's names but not nearly as pe not nearly as many as you do and I think that's really awesome that you have that uh, that memory. I how do you know so many people's names in the community? Do you talk to them like out? Obviously, you talk to them outside of the YouTube world, um, but how did you come about just getting to know those all these people like that? So uh, I know I've only been on the YouTube scene now for like less than a year. But before I got into YouTube, like I was lurking in the shadows, man, like creeping on everybody's content. So you, were, you, you know, I wasn't you were like the Grace Ortiz. Yes, yes, I was. <laughs> yeah, you could you could call me like, you know, mini Grace, man, because I was around. Dude, I was watching all. But Grace, she contributes to the content. Me, man, I was ignorant back in the day when I used to watch video. Anything, but I was there, man. I was there for your early videos too, Ben. Okay. I remember that. And, uh, you know, I just, I love watching long content, dude. Like, my, so I, I have my my uh, Google TV box connected to my TV, and I got my YouTube subscription feed there all the time. And I got to say, one of my favorite pastimes is laying on my couch and watching YouTube videos. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I would say... It's the more I've gotten involved with YouTube, the less I've been able to watch other people. So that's kind of a downside of it. Um, but you're just kind of getting more involved in the community in a different way. You're not necessarily as much of a viewer as you as you are an active participant. So um, I officially cut the cord, man. I don't have any kind of cable TV in my house. The only TV subscription that I have is YouTube uh, Premium. That's it. That's wild. I have we I have not had cable since um undergrad college. Oh man. And that when I lived in a house with a uh, couple other guys, um that was the last time we had 
I remember paying for like legitimate cable. And ever since then, when I was in uh, grad school, uh, and then since I've been married, we've never paid for any sort of uh, uh, cable or anything like that. I, I use Netflix, but I only use it because my my brother shares his uh, username and password, so I'm able to log on to that from time to time. But I don't. Yeah, hey, I heard they're cracking I down. I saw on that. Me. Did you hear I saw about that? that. I didn't read about how they're doing it, but I did hear about it. Stark warning to all you Netflix bootleggers. <laughs> that's unfortunate because I think they get a lot of business that way. I think that's just a, you know, I know there's they're obviously lose business that way, but I think that's the. I don't know. One of the positive things about um, Netflix is, or just those types of streaming services, is being able to share that kind of stuff because I don't know. People enjoy doing that. So, um, totally agree. Real quick, I want to give a super special shout out to the KOTG podcast. The, the, all those guys in the KOTG have been so so supportive, man, and uh, I've been enjoying watching their content and. I had a really awesome time with them on my show, man. Uh, that was a hoot, dude. I had a really good time. I saw that. And What's I, up, guys? And I, I wasn't able to tune into that show. And unfortunately, their uh, their podcast on Tuesdays, I'm not. I generally am not able to to tune into that just because I'm usually working at night. Um, but I know. I don't blame you, man. It's at nine o'clock, dude. That's, that's past my bedtime on a Tuesday well, night, dude. After Wheel of Fortune, I go to well, sleep. <laughs> I think it's really cool though that because uh, a lot of those guys have been in the community for a long time, like on Instagram or, uh, but they may not necessarily create like YouTube content um, on a regular basis. And I thought that was really cool they created that because it was like, excuse me, it was like bringing a whole clump of uh, people from the community into um, YouTube essentially. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I totally agree, man. And they're all awesome guys. Dude, Ned G just said, come on, man. Netflix is only eight bucks a month. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how stingy could we be, man? <laughs> <Not> just... <laughs> hey, we're all trying we'll to throw save down a... $200 fertilizer, but not pay the yeah. $8 for Netflix. We all want beautiful lawns, but we don't care. <laughs> or we care about what we watch, but not that much to pay $8. We'll go to YouTube before we do that. <laughs> Lawn to Learn said, I listen to Drake when I rake. <laughs> Dude, I like that. That has a ring to it, man. <laughs> Dude, speaking of the KOTG podcast and all these guys that are in the live stream right now, could we talk about the influx of lawn talent that has entered the lawn community, man? Yeah, it, I mean, it's been pretty wild to see. It. <laughs> I mean, it's grown exponentially. I remember when I first started my channel, I mean, that first year, there was a ton of people joining in. And then the year after that, it was even more people, and it just seems to it it seems to get become more and more. And I hope that it's a good thing because the more people do that, the more somebody's going to bring um, something even something more. We obviously all bring something original to a degree, but the more people come into the community, the more likelihood somebody's going to bring something really original, something really cool and fun to the the uh, the community. So I'm all about it. Uh, and it just helps, you know, like Alan says, repetition is the key to learning. So, uh, Scott O'Hare, thank you so much for that super chat. I very much appreciate that. Um, unneeded, but very much appreciated. Thank you, sir. He's the man, dude. But yeah, uh, we got a question here from Lon to learn. He said, what height of or what height of cut is George? Well, uh, I could squeeze about 0.6 inches out of my green. Master, so I think I'm gonna be hovering right around in 0.6 inches for the height of cut. Uh, unless I get a new reel mower that can maybe go up to 0.75, I might just do that. But we'll see how the new lawn renovation turns out and keep being super low. Your question, Andy's uh, Andy <laughs> from Andy's Lawn Care and Outdoor Adventures. He asks, What's everybody's pre emergent choice for this season? Um, I'm going with what I went with last year, it's the for diamine 65 wdg i've actually got uh like four lawns i'm gonna spray tomorrow I've, i told my neighbors i'd i'd spray some pre-emergent for them um so i got that going for me for tomorrow just being out in some lawns oh how nice of you ben I'm spraying all, a little pre, spraying a little pre for the name i'm all about giving 
Dude, it, that's awesome, man. Uh, by the way, available at <laughs> yardmastery.com yeah. and available in Pine There's Sides. no links in the description below, but <laughs> if you want to, good. you can certainly go check it out on Yard Mastery. <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, me personally, I won't be uh, apply, applying any pre-emergent. I got the new lawn renovation, so I'm trying to keep it, you know, babied and pampered as possible. Uh, but I will be uh, spraying some of the Prodiamine WDG in the backyard. Right. Uh, but yeah, that's, that, that that's, that's, Are you, I, I wonder how the weed pressure is going to be this year, depending on, I might have to throw down some tenacity, but we'll see weed pressure in the. Are you planning on overseeding at all in any areas? Uh, yeah, actually on my boulevard strip, I don't know if you remember, I told you I'm not being my whole boulevard strip. So, uh, I'm going to have to seed that here coming up in the spring. And then as far as the front lawn, I'll probably be overseeding that okay. as well. I, I mean, I'd, I'm i good to go. I don't need to do any sort of seeding uh, this spring. I might, like, some very small spots, I might throw some seed down. But for the most part, I'm just kind of letting things be and um, just going with the flow this year. So we'll see. It was, uh, it was an exciting, it was a busy year last year trying to stay ahead of everything and I'm I, every, it's just like every year. I'm always anxious. Cause I'm like, I think I got it. I think I know I have a better plan this year and I think I can stay ahead of it. And I, to a degree, I definitely think that's true because, you know, we learn something every year and then we prepare for it the next year and then we get another curveball thrown at us. And then, then we're back at it again, being behind or something like that. But, um, but no, I, as far as seating goes, I don't know if I'm hoping I don't plan on overseeding at all this year. And and actually I don't even know after how things recovered last year, I I don't even really know if, if uh overseeding is gonna be a big necessity, honestly. Papa Mo's low said my sound is breaking up. If uh if if anybody confirm that, uh we'll take a look at the connection. But uh, you got a super chat there. Thank you so much. Um, Dennis Page, you were a... Uh, you gave me one a couple weeks ago, or if it wasn't last week. Thank you so much for that, man. I very much appreciate that. <clears throat> um, as far as connection goes, everything looks good on my end, so hopefully it's not anything drastic. Um, exactly. Dude, there's so much love, man, tonight in uh, in the comments. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, if you guys could drop a like for Ben, you know, so we could reach more people, that would be totally awesome. By the way, I people that are in the chat right now, I know you guys, I, I see a lot of familiar faces and the fact that, you know, you could come watch my live stream, stop by over here at Ben's. I mean, that, that means so much. So thanks for stopping by. Very much so. Thank you, guys. Uh, see you later, Mark. Thanks for tuning in, bud. Have a good night and a good weekend. Um, I got to pop up to left tool cause he was, he was, uh, he was giving me trouble. He said, I know all Ben listens to is Ariana Grande, <laughs> but I would like <laughs> to know what George listens to right now. Uh, well, well, you know, we do have some people here in the chat. Audio is choppy. Not sure. Everything's good on my end, Ben. Yeah. Every, I mean, you? everything looks good. For me, I, I don't see, I'm not getting any warnings from YouTube like I usually am. I'm not, uh, I'm... the audio, is the audio clipping at all right now? Uh, maybe, I uh, is it clipping on your end? Uh, I don't you see it, my but I'll, I'll, I'll turn it down a little bit to see if that makes a difference. Um, yeah, just keep, just keep, keep an yeah. eye on it, bud. Uh, but yeah, uh, someone asked me, uh, exactly. Uh, hold on one second. My wife said something. No, thank you. Um, but yeah, he asked me uh, exactly what I like to listen to. Here, here's the thing, DJ. When I was younger, and I'm a very eclectic person. I like, I like music. I like country, bluegrass, step, uh, classic rock. I mean, if you look on my playlist, it's just like. Thing. like i like to switch it up but i do get in some moods here and there uh as you guys know i mean i'm from chicago i really like house music that's probably one of my top favorite kinds of music lawn 
So I would say I listen to a lot of uh, electronic house music when I'm in the lawns. But I like all music, music though. But sometimes you want to get that amp, and sometimes you want to feel invigorated. Um, let us know if the uh, I I did make a little bit of adjustment on the audio, so let's let me know if that changes anything or improves anything, because usually I see what I see and or hear what you guys are seeing and hearing. So, um, just let me know. Uh, it's JG's said George is still really choppy. That's weird. I had, I. Yeah, I don't know. I'm uh let me pull up Skype on my end real quick. Guys, don't leave. Uh let's see. I'm looking. Yeah, my audio looks good over here. It's not clipping on my mixer. Uh Skype it's not clipping. And how about yeah, you? Yeah, I mean everything looks looks normal. It looks like it always does every time I do a stream on here, so I'm not sure what's going on. That's weird. And and YouTube saying I have excellent connection. My prepaid minutes, I made sure, guys, I had, I put extra quarters in my router tonight. We're all, we should be good to go. So, hey, we got uh, Alan the Lawn Care Nut in the house tonight. Thanks so much. And he said stream is clear here. So, I think all of you guys have your, you need to start looking at your prepaid minutes. <laughs> hey, man, you know when it comes to live stream, sometimes you gotta just, uh, you know, sometimes you gotta charge things to the game. There's a lot of things that when he was on my show, I was trying to make a phone call and it wasn't going through. But you know, you just that's kind of right. Hold those past it, and, and we'll see how the audio goes. If you guys can update us, maybe. <laughs> hey, by the way, Alan, the long care nut. Thank you so much for stopping by, buddy. I appreciate that. Shout out. Uh, who else? Oh, we got Striper Man in the building. What's up, Keith? Uh. As far as music on my end, I don't, I listen to some, I'm pretty much like you. I listen to a variety of stuff. I, I really like eighties music, but I like rap, hip hop. I like uh, a small margin of country. I like when it comes to, when it comes to the eighties music, are you more of like the, the disco tech kind of guy or more of like the eighties? I like music? both. Yeah. I like, yeah. I like a good combination of, of those. Um, I, I mean, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm never one of those guys that can like, uh, list off artists or certain tracks or anything like that. I just, when I hear a song, I'm like, oh yeah, I like that one. I've heard it. I'm never one that can like, you know, you know, go off the, the artist names or anything like that. I've never been able to do that. So definitely do. Um, George, what's uh, what do you got going on this this year for your lawn? Like, I you know your front lawn. You just you did the you did Mazama in your front yard, right? I did. Midnight. Oh, you did midnight. I thought you did Mazama. Um, I think that's Coven that did the. Mazama, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was well. There's a there's a few people that did. So I I I'm never sure, or I can't always remember who did what. But um, how did how did that all like? I know it did fairly well i know you have a few bare spots here and there that uh if i remember correctly looking at some of your recent videos is by like the sidewalk or something um thanks for bringing that up <laughs> ben <laughs> um well wh what's no, your plan point. for like remedying those those situation or that area i'm a little insecure about my bald areas okay <laughs> uh <laughs> No, uh, well, uh, pretty much the remedy, you know, I'm going to try to oversee them, but uh, a lot of the areas where it's really bald, there's kind of like a little, like, uh, it's like a steep hill there, keeps seed there. You know, I was talking to you about that in the email, Ben, if, you know, if there was any products you knew of where I could lay a seed blanket on there, I'm going to have to look into that because I'm having a real seed sowed in those areas where, where it's kind of a little steeper than other areas and those that's what you're seeing okay. kind of just dips right down so uh i'm gonna try to tackle that this spring see how it goes but you know it's the kbg it'll spread out it might take some time and you know i remember what my lawn used to look like so i'm excited to see how, how it'll look like after the spring and how much it spreads out why are you do you plan on like uh hitting the lawn pretty hard with nitrogen this spring to help it spread encourage it to spread even more along with you know frequent mowing well, here, uh, nitrogen, 
man, I learned a hard lesson last fall, you know, uh, especially because I'm, I'm new to the whole liquid fertilizer thing. You know, I've been strictly a granular guy <laughs> and I, I just started applying okay. liquid fertilizer. Yeah, I got a little trigger happy <laughs> in the fall time and uh, things uh, didn't go out so well. So uh, I nitrogen kind of have like a low input. Like I might apply like a quarter pound this spring just to, just to jumpstart it once I see it up. And then I'm just going to kind of let it let it do its thing. You know, I, I just did my soil test. I haven't gotten the results back yet, but I'm super excited to see what the results come back as. Let's go from there. Right on. Well, I did the same. I did similar things with, uh, like you did last fall. I did, I, I kind of did that nitrogen blitz thing every week. I was putting down a quarter pound uh, using uh, sprayable ammonium sulfate. And I was a little nervous at the beginning of it because I, you know, I didn't want to do anything bad or, or hurt anything. But then I got kind of got comfortable and kind of got in a groove with applying it and, and doing fairly well. And it all worked out pretty well this year. I'm, I'm planning on kind of doing something similar this spring. It's just kind of spoon feeding a little bit every week. Uh, Lawn Journeys asks, what... Uh... He has a question for me and you, Ben. He said, what are you this season? Do you want me to go first or do you want to go? Yeah, yeah, you can go ahead and go. Um, So I'm going to be using uh, a lot of my nitrogen source is going to be coming from ammonium sulfate just to continue working on that pH a little bit. Um, so I'm going to be using some of the sprayable ammonium sulfate I get from a local rural king here. Um, but I'll probably still throw down some granular fert. I want to try some of the Yard Mastery products, um, the flagship, uh, the Double Dark. Um, but I don't, that's one thing I, over the last couple of years, I haven't been able to like nail down like, all right, I want to stick with, you know, these fertilizers because I'm, I'm always wanting to try different things. And that's kind of nerve wracking to an extent because I just like to, I'm I'm the kind of person that likes to find what you like and then just kind of stick with it and rotate with it and stuff like that. So, I don't know. What about you, George? Uh, well, I just picked up. Uh, I just got some of the flagship and the double dark, so I'll be using that. And then uh, what I usually use aside from that uh, is the simple lawn solutions. But I, as you know, I had a bad experience with that, so I don't know how much of that I'm going to be applying. Uh, and then lawn journeys, he also asked if we're into the biostim packs. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of humic acid in my garage. So, you know, I always like throwing that stuff down when I got the urge to throw something down. So, uh, I like to apply that with fertilizer as well. So I'll be doing that. Hey, we got a question from Lake House Lawn Care. I he saw said, that one. Uh, he said, if you played in the MLB, what would your walk up song be? I'll I don't you, see ben. You can't put me on the spot like that because. I don't remember songs until I, like, there'll there'll be a song like, oh, that that's the one I want, and then I'll hear another one I'm like, no, that's the one I want. Like, I can't re I can't think of stuff. I'll have to think of of something really quick because, um, I I'm trying to see. Probably I don't know. I really like the Who, man, Bob O'Reilly, dude. There's just something about that song that really pumps me up, man, and uh, I, it just kind of puts me in my feels, but, uh, there's probably a better option if I'm trying to pump up the crowd, but I'm, I'm a really big fan of that song. And then we got a question over here from the Longineer. He said, George, what, uh, who did you go for with the soil test? I'm actually glad you mentioned that because I just released a video about the soil test that I did. I ended up going with waypoint analytical. I haven't gotten my results yet, yet, but they sent me an email saying it'll be available in 24 hours. So Super excited to see what those results are. Um, uh, did you get your soil test back yet, Ben? Yeah, uh, I did. And I'm really, it was really cool to, I'll mention it here. I do plan on making it, making a video. Um, it was so cool to get it back. I was super anxious to, to see the changes that had occurred from last year. And for those of you who don't know, uh, my pH last year when I moved into this house uh, was an 8.3, which is very high. It's a very alkaline soil, and I was having a lot of issues. The lawn wasn't responding to fertilizers and those types of things, and I did another soil test uh, using Waypoint. I actually sent it to Champaign, Illinois, the same place that, that uh, George sent his, and uh, my pH came back to a 7.8. So that's a really big change because um, uh, the pH is a logarithmic scale, so 
just a tenth of a point is uh, can takes a lot to change, especially lowering pitch. It can take take a while, and um, I was just kind of blown away to see that all that hard work really starting to pay off. And uh, I do plan on making a video about that. I you know a little spoil alert in the in the live stream, I, but I know not everybody in my audience watches these, so I'll still make a video about it. Nice, nice. Over here, backyard all day, asked a good question. He said, if you were a grass type, what type of grass would you be and why? I think that's a really easy uh, question to answer. Me personally, I would be KBG hands down. I know it's not as dark and tan and pretty and sexy as perennial ryegrass, but <laughs> it is a very resilient grass type and it can uh, recover from a lot of different stresses and uh, things. And it just keeps on pushing on, you know, it has the perseverance, it has the character. And I would definitely be the KVG. How about you, Ben? I think I'd have to be Bermuda. Bermuda. Huh? I just I like how I like the dominance. You ready to retire to Florida or what? <laughs> no, I'm not ready to go down there. But uh, I do wish I was back down in Texas where I grew up because if I had a Bermuda lawn, I would do so much, do things so much differently than I did when I was a kid maintaining my parents' Bermuda lawn. But no, I just really like how. Bermuda is. I like how it's uh, very, to some degree, obviously, where where we are here, I think it can be a low-maintenance kind of turf um, if it's in the right uh, place. I mean, like, the farther you go to down south, obviously, my experience is very limited. Um, but I know, like, when I had it here in St. Louis, the common Bermuda, like, there's not, it, it's, it, the amount of humidity and heat and heat and stuff it gets here it that it just laughs at it it's like though that's nothing like you put me down farther south like it's maybe a little bit different story you have to worry about the fungus and stuff like that but um uh i don't know i just i like how how aggressive it is when it self repairs and and all those types of things so that's what i'd go with it's a warrior like just like you ben yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, I'm just Ron kidding, Henry's man. in the house. Uh, he, I don't. What's up, I don't man? know how you do a two-hour stream, Q and A stream, <laughs> and then you hop in on here. Uh, that's commitment to the community and all of that. I mean, I just, I don't know how you do it, but I appreciate it so much. I'm glad you mentioned that, Ben, because I was just in Ron Henry's live stream and I literally commented that that I admire his consistency, man. And, you know, I, I think it's because he's in Taekwondo, you know, because they teach that perseverance is like one of the fundamentals of Taekwondo. And I feel like Ron has really mastered that, especially in the long community, releasing multiple videos a week, doing two hour plus live streams. I mean, my hat's off is to him, man. I know how much work I put into my content, and it's nowhere near the amount of yeah. So, Ron, I see you, bro, man. Good job. <laughs> yeah, and I, I doesn't. I think I may be wrong, but Ron, throw this up in the chat. I thought you. I thought I've seen on Instagram that you would do uh, like uh, clo close quarters. Is it called like close quarter training with uh, with handguns and stuff like that? I thought I've seen him have that kind of stuff on on his Instagram, doesn't he, George? Ron's packing that heat. Because <clears throat> I know I've seen that on his... I, anyways. <laughs> I, 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 am I wrong? I thought I've seen that. Uh, yes, yes. Ron is a is a renaissance man. He has multiple talents. <laughs> uh, he shoots guns, he uh, totes dice, and he mows lawns. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, he does, man, actually. Uh, we're always uh, talking about, uh, you know, arms. Uh, about, I think he's got the G7. Well, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day, but... Uh, yeah, he does. Um, well, George, how did you? I asked. I asked this for a lot of people that I don't know um, that come on the show. But how did you get into lawn care? Like, what was your? What was the 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 straw that broke the camel's back, if you want to call it that? Yeah. Well, you know, it all started when I bought this house. Uh, I bought this. Uh, you know, I talked about this on one of my videos, but I bought this house when I was twenty five years old. I was a young punk. They didn't know or care about anything. And uh, I definitely I definitely grew as a person, you know, ever since owning a home. Because once you own a home, nobody tells you that becomes a full-time job. And it started with, you know, small around-the-house things. You know, I know you're a big fan of uh, Handy Dad TV. I was watching him a lot. 
on how to do like basic things like changing my air filters and stuff like that. But when it got to my lawn, I didn't really think about it too much because I grew up in the city of Chicago and our lawns there were so small, man, you can cut it with a pair of Fisker scissors, dude. I'm not even kidding you. So when I got my lawn, I just started looking up videos, obviously land on LCN and uh, that was the rabbit hole, man. And once I perfected my six cut and my six inch cut lawn, I yearned for more. And then Connor and then Connor Ward entered the picture. And uh, let's just say he was a huge influence on uh, the Lomo. And then Brett was another huge influence. And then Ryan. And then, uh, uh, long behold, you know, I got about 300 different long guys on my subscription feed. I don't even like subscribing to other kinds of YouTube content, just long. <laughs> so I so, I have, like, kind of two channels because I have, like, my own personal one that I'll subscribe to just stuff that is not lawn related. And then I have this channel that's all lawn related. So, um, but I do know that you, I did hear the story behind your name, uh, because I was always curious about that. Um, it was, you had decided on the name of your channel and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, because when you went to go shopping for rings for your wife, uh, the, with the cut of the diamond, um, like they, the princess cut was like the finest cut diamond you could get, uh, for a diamond. And that's what you use to name your YouTube channel. Is that right? Exactly, man. Uh, you know, I was like really getting into lawn care at that time when I was like, gonna when I proposed to my, you know, wife and I went shopping and every, everybody just, you know how they are, man, at the diamond stores, they're always trying to upsell mm -hmm. you over there. And I just kept on hearing princess cut this princess cut that. And like, I really didn't know what it was. And I asked them, what is that? They're like, it is the finest cut diamond. So when I was naming my channel, I was like, you know what? Fine. I'm going to call it princess cut lawn care. And I know it's going to raise a lot of eyebrows, but that's okay. Because if there's one thing I've learned, man, no press is bad press. <laughs> well, and I've, I think, cause <laughs> I always like, I think some people think of like princess, they think of like princesses like that's, but they, if you don't know, like the reasoning behind your channel that you wouldn't know the backstory essentially like people be like why is this guy's name princess cut like <laughs> but then i hopefully they can hopefully when they see your logo they can kind of put two and two together and be like oh, okay now i get it so yeah it's kind of like a, a little surprise for them man if somebody's interested in my content and they watch enough of it eventually they'll hear the backstory behind it you sure. know but until then, it's a little bit of a mystery for them. LG, thank you so much for tuning in tonight, and thank you so much for the super chat. It's very much appreciated. Um, while while I'm on uh, while I'm on that, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting the, the like button just to uh, help the help this spread more on YouTube and all that kind of stuff, that'd be very much appreciated. Uh, hitting the like button is a does go a long way for all of us creators. Um, and I would, I also wanted to say, uh, George's channel and his Instagram account is all linked in the description below. So, uh, do be sure if you don't know of George, go check him out subscribe to his channel, um, follow him on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Cause he does put out some really great content for our community. <clears throat> well, yes. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. And LG man, he's the man doing it in the house. Appreciate that. All these super chats, you're gonna have to take me out yeah, for lunch. Yeah. Well, but... are you going to? Uh, do you plan on going to the GIE this year? Uh, actually, I, I I would like to. I mean, I don't know. Is it gonna be alive this year? I heard that as of now, it is going to be, but I'm not sure how that's gonna be. Usually, it's in August. Uh, right? October. Oh, I, oops. <laughs> I was way off. I really want to go to the GIE because I've been watching lawn care videos for years and years, man. And every year I see all you guys get together and have a jolly old time, man, at the GIE, dude. And I'm over here, you know, sitting in my whitey tighties on my couch watching you guys have fun, dude. What's up with that? Uh, hey, there was the first time, uh, <laughs> the first year, I think it was 20. Yeah, because I went 2019, 2018. I saw all the, everybody's stuff and I was like, man, I want to be there. And then 2019, everybody that was there said there's even more people. So I think it, every year, more and more of the DIY lawn care YouTubers end up going. So hopefully you can go. And if you do, I will certainly buy you that lunch. And uh, if you're, I don't know if you like beer, but I'll buy you a beer too. So um, 
<clears throat> yeah, that'll be a good time to have everybody there if, if uh, it happens this year and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to need a couple of brewskis, man, because I, I always notice once people are there, you know, they kind of just stand around with their cameras looking like a little bit shy, dude. Even the big guys, man. <clears throat> So I'm gonna need a I'm gonna need a couple of brews to loosen up over there, dude. I'm sure it's surreal, dude. You're making all this long content. You see all these people all the time. You're talking to them, and then, boom, major social interaction, uh, social anxiety just kicks in, dude. Trust me, man. I know how. Yeah, that goes. it is. It is kind of surreal a little bit because you're like, I see you a lot on your videos, and I feel like, I mean, it's just like if you met if you've ever met any of the YouTubers, you're always like, when you first meet them, it, it feels like. You've known him for a long time, even though you've never met him, uh, <laughs> and you've just only watched their their YouTube stuff. That was what it felt like for me when I met, um, you know, like Jordan from the Lawn Tools and Ryan Knorr and uh, Grass Daddy and all those kind of things. It was it was pretty cool. So, um, but I just want to go to GIE, man. Sit down in that circle, man, with Ryan Allen and all you guys, man, and just. Just shoot the sh shoot, you know, talk about lawns. That's right. Uh, Kyle from Lake House, no, it is a jug of water, not milk. <laughs> uh, Coven uh, Carlson is in the house. Coven, thanks for tuning in tonight. I don't know if you've ever tuned in, but I don't think I've seen you in the chat before, so thanks for coming on. Coven is a local uh, St. Louis lawn care nut, for those of you who don't know. Oh, I've been watching Coven. For a he had thanks for stopping by coven dude i really like your real mowing content dude i know you got two different I don't know if you still got both of them or not uh yeah like, like the ultra rare like 17 inch mclean mm -hmm. with like the super thick groove roller mm -hmm. anyways man i'm nerding out no, about that nerd but, out uh, that, that's what that this show's totally about cool. <clears throat> but yeah man he has awesome content dude i watched uh i watched all his stuff man back in the day so thanks for stopping by coven I remember you stopped by on one of my live streams that I had, but it's good to see you, man. And Jason Cyberlick, what's up, Jason? <laughs> we got Cedric Thompson in the building. Bye, dude. How's the new house going? I know he got a new crib. So, uh, what what's going to be your f first course of action out in the lawn this year? I know your snow just melted. When when are you going to be mowing first? What what are you going to do? Uh, you know, I'm just gonna take it easy, man. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm trying to figure out when's the best time I should overseed, because I don't want any seed to wash away. But I also want to overseed when the temperatures get up. I'm gonna be honest with you, God honest, man. I am skeptical about dormant seeding. Have you ever did it before? No, I've never done that. How do you feel about it? I mean, it to a degree. I've heard it can kind of be like a a gamble, like you're. You're just kind of hedging your bets against what, um, what the weather does, because that's really what's going to determine if it's. I think a lot of what's going to determine if it's successful or not, because you could put it down, then you can hit good temperatures, it starts germinating, then you could have, you know, a hard freeze or whatever, and then that wipes it out. Um, that but, I saw people throwing down seed during the polar vortex, man. I was like, what? the heck is going on yeah but i've i've that's one thing i've heard like i've heard you can like you can even put it down when it's snowing or right before it snows and that actually kind of helps work it down into the soil and to a degree it kind of like insulates it and uh protects it because it's not just sitting on you know dry bare cold soil during the rest of the winter um so i don't know i don't i don't know like I know from what I saw on Jimmy's channel, he said his uh, his seeds coming up, and I know he's got some pretty cold temperatures that they get out in his neck of the woods in Utah. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I, sometimes I feel like we sometimes people talk about grass being more fragile than it is because when you really think about it, I mean, look at what Connor Ward does. He walks all over his lawn during the winter and everybody's like, Oh, don't walk on it during the winter. You're going to hurt the crowns. He goes out there with his <laughs> snowblower and then it comes back looking really good in the spring. So I think it's more resilient than some people give it credit for. I don't know. Yeah, no, I totally agree, man. Over here, I see that uh, Kyle said we got a 
we got a carpool to GIE. I'm totally down, man. Anybody who's in the Chicagoland area, hit up our Facebook Chicagoland group, and uh, who knows, man? Maybe we could rent one of those Sprinter vans or something, man, and and uh, turn up on the way to GIE because I'm not one for long road trips, man. I'm not really good at that, you know. I get kind of antsy, so it'd be nice to have some company. Uh, maybe uh, do some uh, chilling. Whatever. So we did that uh, in twenty, the last GIE. We I didn't carpool with anybody, but we did. <laughs> me and the lawn tools uh, stayed at an Airbnb while we were there. So that was kind of fun, like you know, sharing a place to stay at while we were there. And Jimmy actually stayed one of the nights as well before the lawn tools got that. So or got there. So that was really cool, just to. Again, kind of having that interaction with everybody. Uh, Did you guys turn up? <laughs> <laughs> there, that's not really that's not really their style. But <laughs> <laughs> dude, you got to come stay at our Airbnb, man. We're gonna shut it down, dude. They're never gonna let us come back to that Airbnb. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it'll be for it'll be interesting for sure. The more people, the more the the more people from the DIY community come to the GIE, the more we're just gonna get different personalities, and it's just gonna be more and more fun. So, um, yeah, exactly, man. And it's just cool. It's really cool to see how many like vendors and ever and all the equipment that that goes into it. I mean, it it is huge. How much stuff is there in like the the building that it's all in? It's remarkable. So. I heard, I think Alan was telling me that you were working with some vendors at GIE or something like that. Is that true? Yeah. So that was, that was uh, 2019. That was the year we were, we did that uh, thing with Ben Sims from Lawn Tips. We got him to come to the United States. Uh, we It was like the coming to America deal. <laughs> that was, uh, we did, uh, I worked with a lot of companies to sponsor that essentially to get him to come here that basically paid for the majority of his trip to come to the United States and, and go to the GIE. And that's when he did the whole, you know, he was with Alan, then he went to the GIE, then he went to Ryan Norris place. Then he went to Connor's place. Uh, Didn't he lose his passport while he was Yeah. He lost it while he was in uh, Florida right before. And he didn't know he lost it until right before he tried to leave Florida to come to Louisville for the GIE. So that put a little, little hiccup in things, but everything worked out. So, Nice, nice. But man. yet, well, it was a lo- dude, talk about a buzzkill as soon as you land. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> well, I don't think, yeah, because we were, I, I picked him up from the airport that night, and it was much later than it was supposed to be because their flights, they kept delaying their flight. So, because they were looking for his passport um, and working out stuff with his country to get it all worked out because it didn't matter for travel domestic, like he could travel domestically within the United States without it, but, uh, he couldn't, he couldn't get back home without it. So that was kind of the big, the big deal. <clears throat> Dude, can you imagine going, us go, leaving America to a different country and not having our passport, man, I'd be pooping bricks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so it, it's so weird. It, I mean, it's, if you think about it, like he had never been to the, I don't think he'd ever been to the United States. He had never met any of us in person. I mean, how, I mean, you're throwing a lot of trust in a lot of people, um, and then you lose your passport. I, yeah, you're, <laughs> I could see how your nerves could kind of be on, on, uh, on edge the, for a lot of that, uh, trip, especially during that point in time. But he had a good time. I think everybody had a good time. It, it, uh, it was really cool to meet him. Cause I don't know if I'll ever get to meet him again since he's all the way in Australia. Hopefully I get to go to Australia someday that I'd love to get out there. What up, Mike? Yeah, exactly. Back for another long tip vid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, I, uh, now I'm super pumped for GIE, man. I'm glad that you put it in my brain because I wasn't really thinking about it, to be honest with you. But I'm starting to get cabin fever up in this house, man. And I need to do something, man, because these walls are just closing in on me, man, every day. You should uh, take the family down to Florida and check out Yardmaster headquarters. <laughs> Yeah, actually, Alan invited me down there, dude. Uh, he asked me if I wanted to go fishing or go to the Everglades. Yeah, man. you should go down there. It'd be a good good time. You could uh, it'd be. A good, I think it'd be a good trip for you and your family. Are you Are you going down there anytime soon? I I plan. I hope to get down there at some point. It's just uh, logistically, it can be challenging with uh, 
three kids and a dog and you know because uh, we want to try to make it a family trip and because I'm I'm our primary caregiver here so um you know I can't just leave the kids uh because then my wife has to to take off work and those types of things so it's just a it's just a logistic thing but yes I do plan on getting down there this year hopefully nice, man. Hey, uh, over here in the comments, Elevator Landscape said that he threw down some Cido Grow today. I've been hearing a lot about this Cido Cido Grow. You guys offer it, right, Ben? Yeah, that's I believe that's a BioPro product. Um, is I it? I think so. I I'm wondering what it is. I think it. Do you know a lot about it? I no? I don't. I know it's got. Uh, it's a it's a very concentrate. It's a it's a very um, concentrated product that you very you use like an extremely small amount per application um really? but i know it, it's similar to the the uh this i think I, I think it's similar to the next ck i could be wrong but i think it's a similar product oh okay <clears throat> but uh but yeah oh yeah that's cool man uh Around the house of pets said it hasn't changed in the last fifty years. Oh, he never. Oh yeah, he was talking about his dad. Yeah. And, uh, around the house of pet man, I'm super excited to see what you're gonna do with that swordman man. I know you just got that swordman, so I look forward to seeing that. I might be in the market for that. I was actually in Ron Henry's live stream when he had the real roller guys on, and I specifically asked them when they were gonna upgrade the the Briggs engine to the Honda engine. So as soon as they do that, I'm pretty much certain i'm gonna go ahead and and get the the swordman for sure not that there's anything wrong with the with the briggs engine per se but uh, i just rather have honda you know you know me uh man i'm a big honda yeah. guy I, it, anytime there's a honda for me that's always a uh Selling yes point? i you i don't know there, the reliability with the honda product honda honda engine it i mean you can't beat it. it's it's there's just something about Hondas that they know what they're doing. Uh, I'm looking up the side of growth thing because I'm kind of I wanted to help this guy out. So uh, back to the around the house with Pat. Does he have a YouTube channel? He does. Yeah, he I, does a lot of different things, not just lawn care. He does uh, gardening and flowers. And okay. Well, DIY I'm, lawn care stuff. I'm gonna have but... to go check him out. For anybody in the chat, go check around the house with Pat. Uh, give him a follow. Uh, subscribe to his channel and all that fun jazz. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm looking. I'm looking in the chat, man. There's a whole bunch of lawn creators in here, and uh, I just want to say, man, all you guys are doing good this year. I've been watching a lot of your guys' content. Uh, if you don't see me commenting or engaging with you guys, reach out to me. I mean, I'd be happy to look over your content and see what you guys got going on. Uh, I feel. I feel like we're going to have a lot, lot of talent coming out this year, dude. And, uh, you know, I'm always looking out for that because uh, the freshman class podcast may be ending, but that doesn't mean that, you know, we could start looking out for next year to see who made a splash in the lawn care community this year. And, you know, we can get to know you a little bit more on our podcast next season. Yeah, and I lo I, I really like that you did that with uh, the freshman class because – I mean, there's a lot of people I would want to have on, on here as well, but it, there's just, I mean, there's so many people that you're, I mean, it's kind of overwhelming to think about it. So I think it's awesome that you brought those guys on the, on your show. Um, because, you know, just like you, when you started your channel out, it's, you don't necessarily, it's not easy to get, you know, awareness from, uh, other people and get awareness in the community. And then it's, it's people like you and I that help, those small guys get their name out there because uh alan and ryan and connor all those guys those guys help me out so it's just kind of passing it on to other people and making sure making sure you're helping other people out and uh i think that's that's one thing that the freshman class podcast really did yeah you know i mean it it didn't have a ton of views or anything like that but the view viewers that we did get those were people that were really supportive of each other and those were people that were really there to engage and network with everyone and check out new content and I, I just I really did like that podcast and I like the idea of it because like you said I mean it, it's hard to hard to get your name out there when you're newer man unless you have like a video that just kind of takes off out of nowhere so yeah uh, hopefully you know we could bring more awareness to that and, uh, and and it's always fun talking to them because we know all the YouTube personalities that are out there right now 
but we don't really get to know the new guys too much. And I've been seeing that they all have their own unique personalities and they all have something to bring to the table unique. So I really had a lot of fun with that. Mm -hmm. By the way, if anybody's watching this video and uh, you haven't seen it, it's called the freshman class where I interview some of the new lawn care YouTubers in the community. So if you want to check that out on my channel, that would be awesome. Shameless plug, but uh, it's a really good place to check out new talent and get to know some some of the other lawn care creators you might not know too well. Did you did you put that on uh, podcast pet platforms as well, or is it just the American Stop Lawn Lawns that you put on there? Uh, yeah, I guess I've been a little lackadaisical in uploading the freshman class ones, but okay. uh, I'll be uploading all of them there. I think there's like three or four episodes up on uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts right now. Okay. <clears throat> you know how that goes, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's never fun uploading a podcast. <laughs> Do you? So that was one of the. Uh, I know we talked a little bit about this on when I was on your show, just about advice and stuff from uh, for up and coming creators and and even young creators right now. Because uh, I still I still consider myself a young creator because I'm not my channel's not huge or anything like that. Like. You know, I think that, like, do you have anything that you would offer in your first year of having your YouTube channel? Like, what have, what have you learned, George? Uh, I've learned that it's really hard to come up with original content. So I think the best way to see your content, uh, the best way to get your content exposed is just be original, be yourself, and try to deliver it in a way that nobody else is is delivering it. And that's kind of what... I've been doing some of my videos hit, some of them miss, you know, don't get discouraged if you release a video and it doesn't get a bunch of views because I've noticed that if you make videos for search, you might not get a, view, a lot of views at first, but later on those views will start picking up and they'll get into the algorithm. Like I did a, gly a glyphosate video like a few months ago when I first released it, nobody watched it. The click through rate was garbage. And then all of a sudden now it's trending and it's getting a whole bunch of views out of nowhere. It's at like 10,000 in the last two weeks. So I think that I think that's one thing. With YouTube, you just got to be consistent, man. Because uh, nine times out of ten, your video won't take off right away. And if it does take off right away, it might not consistently take off. Spurge. So just stay consistent and, and, and you'll get noticed. And just be original. Yeah, I would, I mean, that's, that's spot on. Um, and I would say it, to add to that or to echo that, like, don't get, especially if you're just starting out, don't get all wrapped up in the, the, uh, analytics of things, because when you're just starting out, it's really hard for the analytics to show you things that are like something of value because there's really little to no data to, to base that off of anything. So as a young creator, you really just need to keep, pumping out consistent uh um content and i would say one of the things uh that you know can be kind of a stressor is don't uh think that you need to do something every week because that's what youtube tells you to do or that's what somebody else told you to do to be bigger i mean obviously the more consistent you are to the be at the beginning the the more likely the the increased likelihood of your channel actually getting noticed quicker um but it's uh it doing it that way can uh, and like that's that way is perfectly fine but doing it that way can kind of be uh can burn you out really quick and you start to not uh want to do it as much so i would say make it consistent but make it consistent with what you want to do i mean that's really the best thing to do about it because then you're going to be making you're always going to stay original with your content you're going to still have fun with it and it's going to take uh you're not going to get burned out at least as quickly if you do it that way so i don't know there's kind of there it's kind of a double or not a double -edged, i guess a double-edged sword but there's kind of a, a balance there yes i totally agree and uh, it's fun for you. Like if you just make sterile content that's not fun for you, you'll definitely burn out. Uh, I had that early on. You know, I my content was kind of cut and dry in the beginning, you know, but then I started doing things that I like to do. And even though it might not result in a whole bunch of, I still like to do it. I look forward to it and I like being out there, but I'm still trying to figure out the perfect balance between 
uh, as me and Ron were talking about fluff, Ron and I were talking about that. I'm still trying to figure out the 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 balance between fluff and content. So yeah, uh, that's that's something I'm definitely going to be working out on because I like to I like to take an artistic approach to making my videos, and uh, you know sometimes that's not the best thing to do. You know. Well, and no, and I I don't necessarily think that's not a bad idea because that that's what adds your own unique signature to it if you want to call it that, but um. But there's a fine line between artistic and people tuning out, you know? Sure, absolutely. I mean, you have to keep it engaging, 100%. Yep. Uh, the other thing about it, too, is like, because I really like the vlog style, and not everybody likes it. Some people, like, they just want to have teaching videos, and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, like, a v vlog style stuff, like, you have to be... Um, I mean, in a way, you have to almost be interesting to, for people to like, oh, I wonder what Ben's doing now in his lawn or house this week. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it you have to be like kind of engaging to for people to come in uh, to keep coming back for those type of videos versus if it's just like always more trending toward a how to kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's <clears throat> it, it can be a different thing. Then you're then you can dial in more of the algorithms if you want to call it that whereas vlog style stuff it may not be algorithms where it's more like you're getting more of a following or base it's actually really interested in knowing what you're doing now or what's going on in your lawn and they're following up with something you put with uh, a video you put out a couple of weeks ago or something like that yeah I, i'm actually glad you mentioned that because i just got a vlogging lens man so i'm super excited to use that i don't know if you noticed watching any of my videos david that it's all been on a tripod and just me talking to the camera, mm -hmm. but I finally got a wide enough lens now that I could vlog. So it's going to be a little weird getting used to that, man, because I've never walked around with a camera before. Really? Yeah. That's, I, that, that's definitely another one of those. I mean, we could go on for like an hour about that topic <laughs> of just like the, the fears or the anxiety people get of being outside where their neighbors might be outside and you're walking around in your yard, excuse me, talking to a camera or something like that. And it's kind of like a self-conscious thing. But at the same time, I, I think I talked, I did talk about this in a couple episodes ago where you'd be surprised how many of your neighbors actually know what you're doing. And you didn't even know that they're like, Oh, you do YouTube. Don't you? I'm like, yeah, I did my, my whole, block now knows that i'm a youtuber because my whole block is filled with kids uh -huh. in the neighborhood and they always see me out there filming and i actually try to incorporate them in some of my videos so like i have like three different kids from three different neighbors that have been like made cameos or contributed to my videos so like the whole block knows that i'm youtubing so at this point man i could go walk out there with a cinema rig dude in my hand and nobody's gonna yeah. bat an eye <laughs> well that's like when we first moved in i was like all right I don't know my neighbors, so I can kind of. I'm a little bit more confident now because I I don't have to worry about embarrassing myself in front of neighbors I know now because these people don't know me. <laughs> yeah, um, totally. Uh, over here, just got a mo. He asked the question, "What's the best editing software?" Uh, so is Lawn Journeys in the group right now? Did you see him in here? Uh, I thought I saw him. So Lawn Journeys is going to be starting a. It's a Skype or a Zoom session where all the long care creators can get together and, and share ideas about editing and equipment and best practices and stuff like that. So I do look forward to him posting that in, in the long care. Group, but if you guys want to uh, tune into that and maybe learn some tips from other people in the long care community that have been doing this, uh, definitely join that. So just be, a, be on the lookout in the long care creator group because he's going to be organizing that. I didn't know he was doing that. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, but to answer your question, I don't know if there's a, a best, you know, I think it's kind of like finding what you have and using that to the best of your ability. Um, I, I don't know the, the thing that Jordan always says is like using, using what you're, ha using what you, you have is better than not, uh, using what you wish you had or something like that. Um, because I know I started editing editing some of my early videos with um, Microsoft. It was like Movie Maker or something like that. It was rough. <laughs> it was rough. 
But it got you know, quick time player. <laughs> No, just kidding, man. No, but I totally agree, man. I mean, my first 10 video. Look, check this out, man. You want to hear the craziest thing? I always tell people this. My first 10 videos were all filmed on my iPhone. And all those videos have the most views on my channel. So that just goes to show you equipment doesn't matter, yeah. you know? I mean, uh, if my videos look nice, you know, it's because I actually have a hobby in camera gear, not because it really matters to the YouTube scene, to be honest sure. with you. Well, no, and I've yeah. even heard some of the biggest YouTubers out there. They say it's not really about the equipment; it's about how you use the, how you use the equipment that you have, um, yeah. because you don't necessarily have to. I mean, as long as you have okay video and decent audio, people will watch it. If your audio is really bad, then you're you're kind of in trouble there, because that's that's something that people won't compromise on. Yeah, audio is everything, man. Especially now, you know, uh, Alan and I were talking about this, how, you know, long form content is taking over and a lot of people, they just don't want to watch videos anymore. You know, uh, even me, I know that sometimes when I go to sleep, I put on a YouTube video and just fall asleep to the video, you know, without the screen even on. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Especially those long guardian videos. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. That's smooth, sultry they're, voice. They're man. boring. Not <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> nah, man. Uh, <laughs> um i i use final cut what do you use george uh i also use final okay. cut man you're because uh, that's dude, that's the thing about final cut they offer a free um they offer a free trial for three months i've never had a free trial for something for three months man but they know how to get you because they give you that free trial and they know that there's no way in hell that you're not gonna buy it <clears throat> Well, I know iMovie to a degree is like a very, very da uh, it's a very small version of what Final Cut is. I've never edited with iMovie, but I've 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 looked inside it and played with it for a little bit. I'm like, oh, this is like a a very basic version of uh, Final Cut. Nice man. Yeah, uh, I used iMovie, but the rendering time was oh, okay. slow and. No plugins and all that. That's what I use for my first ten videos too, man. But you, you, you know how that goes, sure. dude. <laughs> and real quick, anybody watching this live stream, if you guys haven't hit that like button, I'm sure Ben will appreciate it. Helps all of us reach more people in the algorithm, dude. How awesome would it be if these podcasts start trending, Ben? Like coming up here in the growing. That season? would be interesting. I, it would be really cool. I don't. I've been. Uh, I, I would. I would be surprised if they did. I I know I told my brother earlier today. I was like, "Yeah, I think I'm going to start wrapping up the the season or the podcast uh in a couple weeks." And he's like, "Oh, really? Right before the, you know, like everybody's starting to get out in their lawn." I was like, "Yeah, it's just kind of like <laughs> a winter thing and just kind of testing it out and see how it goes cuz I don't know how many people are actually going to be cuz I feel like winter time everybody's like, "I want something to watch or want something to like communicate with everybody. And that's what I feel like these have been like yours, mine and Ron's. And, uh, I don't know if everybody's going to be doing that. Cause like when this heat of the season comes on, everybody's they're busy and, and they're not, they don't have time to kind of tune into these things. So I don't know. Yeah. Over here. I want to give a super special shout out to Mauro Marcello. The Mauro has been a hardcore supporter. Uh, of uh, my channel and our, our streams, and I see he's here on your channel now. That's awesome. Thank you so much for stopping by, Moral. Appreciate that. And thank buddy. you for everybody tuning in tonight. It, it really does. I, I know I say this every week, but you guys don't understand as a creator just how much it does mean to all of us to uh, for you guys to tune in. Uh, whether you're not a, whether or not you're a frequent watcher or you're it's the first time, it does mean a lot for you guys to come in, interact on the chat. Uh, the simple likes do a, a great thing for the creators. Um, so it does mean a lot of things. So, um, I'm getting close to, uh, to wrapping up the show, but I want to give George just kind of a, a little opportunity to give any, any sneak peeks or plugs on something you might be, you know, working on coming up in this year for people to look out for on your channel. Sure. Well, uh, you know, the good thing about my lawn is I got the shortcut lawn in the front. I got the long grass in the back. So whether you got the shortcut or the long cut, you know, there'll definitely be something there for you. Uh, this this uh, year, well, I guess you could say this spring, I'm going to be trying to thicken up my 
brand new lawn renovation that I did last fall uh, in my front yard. It's 100% monostain min midnight Kentucky KVG. Super excited to see how that's going to go. We're going to be doing a seating project on the Boulevard Strip this spring. And then uh, we're going to be doing some general lawn maintenance in the backyard, trying some new products uh, and, and uh, just just uh, seeing how that goes. So if you guys want to stop by my channel, my channel is Princess Cut Lawn Care. And my Instagram is Princess Cut Lawn. And my TikTok is Princess Cut Lawn as well. Uh, I mean, I'd be super excited and grateful if you guys stop by uh, and check out my content. Uh, if you like it, subscribe. That would be totally awesome. Uh, and you know what, Ben? Uh, again, I got to say thank you for inviting me here on the show, man. Dude, it, it was so awesome being here and being on the other side of things. Like, it's like the people at home don't know how hard it is to operate those live streams. <laughs> but, like, it is like I feel like I'm on vacation right now. Man. <laughs> nice. Dude. It is. I'm going to sleep good tonight. <laughs> It is different because uh, you can you you help me a lot on the chat tonight because I I'm not always able to keep up with everything. But from your experience being on it, your own podcast, you it, it helped me to kind of for you to do that, to focus on the chat. And I didn't even tell you to do that. You just did it naturally. So it was it was awesome to have you on the show, George. Um, I really look forward to just seeing your content, you know, going even further this year, your, your channel getting bigger. I hope you get bigger than I hope. I hope you, your subscriber count gets more than mine this year. Cause I would love to see your content, uh, just, just grow because it, it is, I, in my opinion, it's more original than mine. And, uh, just the way your editing style, the, the music and how you do things, I really truthfully mean that I, I find it, uh, entertaining and just original. So, um, it was, Thanks, the man. honor is all on my side for you to come on the show tonight. Um, it sounds like your lawn's kind of like a mullet business in the front party in the back. So, <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I hope you had a good time tonight and I hope everybody had a good time tonight tuning in, uh, and enjoyed the show. I hope this was a great start to a, a good relaxing weekend for you guys. If you had a rough week, if anything, I hope this week or this show could have, you know, just kind of loosened you up a little bit and got you ready for a good weekend. And um, not sure if everybody's warming up, but if I hope you are, I hope you're able to get out in the lawn, maybe do some raking, maybe get your first mow in, maybe throw down your prodiamine or pre emerging or first for whatever it is. Hope you get to enjoy it out in the warm sun. Spring is only a week away, everybody. Uh, and it's going to be a great 2021 lawn care season. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. George, any closing remarks? Salute. See you guys. Have a good weekend.